we need to implement some changes in the primary database to make it ready for creating a standby database. First, we have to enable the archiving mode in the primary database. We will save the online read -log files in the uh, recovery file destination. We have just generated a Redo archive file. As you can see, an archived Redo log file has been generated in the FRA disk group. In the second step, we need to enable the force logging option in the database. This is important because logging operation is your enemy in any data guard environment. In the third step, we need to configure a standby redolog files. Those files will be used after switch over or fail over, because as a primary database, it doesn't use any standby redolog. Remember, standby redolog files are used by standby database, not primary database. But you have to configure them in the primary database uh, because they will be used by this database when it becomes a standby database as a result of failover or switch over. As you can see, we have in the primary database three uh, online redo log groups. As we have three uh, online redo log uh, files, we have to create four standby redo log files. Each one should be of 50 MB size. If you copy paste all of them at once, you need to hit the enter three times to execute each statement in the session. As you can see, we have now four groups of standby redolog files. Now we need to set the primary database initialization parameters. We have to set the DB unique name. Uh, it's already set, we can just verify it. We have to set the log archive config and the log archive destination too. You don't have to worry about setting scope equal to both in our commands over here because the scope equals to both uh, by default in our case. You can optionally set this parameter to force the primary database to switch log file after the specified number of seconds. Now you need to set the remote login password file, the FAL server, DB file man, uh, name convert, and standby file management. The FAL uh, server is a parameter that is used by the primary database in case it needed some missing uh, redo log file. It tries to communicate with the standby database to bring the archived redo log file from over there. We need to get uh, the list of the directory dependent parameters so that we create them in the standby database. We have here two parameters that are directory dependent, which are core dump destination and audit file destination. We need to enable the flashback database. 
So I'll set the DB flashback retention target first and then enable the flashback database. After that, we set the control file record keep time. Then we create a password file. Uh, there is a password file already in, the, in our database. I'm just verifying that it is there. Yeah, the password file is already there. We have to configure the tnsnames.ora file now. When you make changes in this file, don't copy paste from the PDF file into the booty session. For some reason, some weird characters will be copied and it will not be recognized by Oracle. The best thing to do and to resolve this issue is to copy the ORADB configuration from uh, the tnsname.ora file and paste it. And after that, you edit it manually to point it to the ORADB underscore S2. I will show you how to do that right away. Just copy the ORADB, paste, and edit manually. Also, Oracle recommends adding this settings, you are equal to A. This is recommended by Oracle when you configure a TNS names.ora to connect to a standby database. We need to configure uh, SQL net.ora file. Uh, this file is already uh, configured in our system. I'm just verifying it is there and configured. Yeah, it is uh, there and directory path is configured in that file. Now we need to test this configuration using TNS ping. I have noticed that duplicate command that we're going to use later in the, in the practice uh, faces some issue about finding the SP file. It looks for the SP file in a location different from the actual location. And the only workaround that I figured out was to make a copy of that file in the directory where the rman is looking for. All what you have to do is to switch as a grid and then make a copy of the SP file to the directory where rman is expecting to find it. I have to switch as grid. Run the ASM CMD utility. Go to the directory where SP file is located. Then figure out what is the name of the SP file that has been created. It will be different from the one that's there in the document. So you have to use ls command to know what is the, SP, the exact name of the SP file. And finally, make copy of that SP file in the ORADB directory under data disk group. Because that is the location where our man is expecting to find the SP file. So far, we have implemented the steps that we should perform in the primary database to make it ready for creating the standby database. In the third phase of this practice, we have to prepare the standby system. We will create a temporary instance that will be used by Arman to create the standby database.